Good afternoon, grade five students. Mr. Waterman here with today's mathematics lesson, the first of the school year on Monday, April 12th, 2021. I hope you all are doing safe and well. I have a lot to show you today in today's mathematics lesson. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of an introduction into what we are going to be studying together this year. Okay, and I'm very excited to teach all of you mathematics this year because I taught many of you for mathematics last year, but I didn't teach all of the grade four classes, but I teach all of the grade five classes this year. So I'm doing something a little bit different with my videos right now. As you can see, I'm talking into a mirror, but I'm recording from my tablet. The reason I'm doing this is because it gives you a chance to see me and to listen closely to what I'm saying as you are watching me speak, but it also gives you a chance to see what I'm writing if I'm writing anything down to show you as an example, okay? So it's kind of like a makeshift split screen. It's not fancy, but eh, it's the best that I can do for now, and hopefully we will only be online for a few weeks. Then you'll be back at school where I can teach you, you can learn together, you can see your friends, and everyone can have a good time. All right, so let's get started. Now, many of you know what this notebook is. If you were a student in this school last year, you know that this is the notebook used in mathematics class. You will have another purple notebook this year for mathematics, okay? It's always going to be a purple notebook. So just as a reminder, when you come to school, when I give you your notebook, the first thing I'm going to have you do is to take a black name pen, a black name pen, and you're going to write your first name and last name. So I'm going to use my Korean name, Taejun. Lee, okay, Taejun's class this year is 5-1, Taejun's student number is number 50. Now, do you remember what we write on the third line? If you said mathematics, that's correct. So I write mathematics here. And the last thing I'm going to write is Mr. Waterman's class. And so you remember the reason I had you do that is because in case you drop your notebook somewhere in the school or if you leave it in the library or if it's in the hallway someone can find it and they could either take it to your homeroom and give it back to you or give it to your teacher or if they see me they can bring it to me and I can give it to you the next time I see you okay so then we're going to do all of this in the first math class together so don't worry this is just me explaining in today's video, we know that our first page, this is going to be our table of contents, right? So that's going to be my title here. Table of contents. And then I will have you number the pages, okay? So that takes care of that. This year, to make things nice and easy for you, I tried this last year with my grade five class and it worked wonderfully. And I think it's going to work beautifully this year too for mathematics for grade five. You are going to get two workbooks. I'm going to show you the first one. First, there's the textbook. This is the textbook that I use. It is an American mathematics textbook. 
okay? We have enough copies for each student to use in class, okay? This textbook comes with two different workbooks that I've made, or put together, I should say. The first one, this is called your practice workbook. This workbook stays in school. You do not take this workbook home. Why not? Well, because when I'm teaching you an objective in math, teaching you how to do something, the practice book is for you to do some of the problems. And then we check the answers in class. Sometimes I will use the practice book as a way to give you a little quiz. Sometimes I will use it to set up a contest if you are working in pairs. Because it's still COVID, it's not very safe for us to work in, in groups just yet. So we have to take things very carefully and do things safely in class, okay? So anyway, back to this practice book. What you're going to do when you get it is you're going to write your name, okay? You're going to write your first name. You're going to write your last name just like Tajin did before. Oops, so let's do that. I need to readjust the, the mirror, and hopefully that's okay. You can still see me. All right. So I'm going to write very carefully so I don't move the mirror. Tay June Lee. My class is 5-1, and my student number is 50, okay? And my name is already on here, Mr. Waterman's class. So again, if something happens to this practice book, whoever finds it can take it to me, or they could take it to your homeroom, okay? Now, the way that this is set up, I've put the schedule in here. This workbook is for the entire school year. This is for 2021 until 2022. So everything we will be studying is listed in here. And I've organized it by the topic, the pages that it's in in the textbook, and the pages that it is in in the practice and homework books. I set it up so it's supposed to go in order. So for example, Order of operations, this is going to be the first topic that we study in math. And then the workbook page is on the bottom, okay? Then it tells you what textbook pages to use it with if you need help. We will always do the practice exercises together in class. So now you see at the top right-hand corner where it says practice, right, okay. After we finish something, we put a check mark next to it, and then we move on to the next topic. So just going in order, we have prime and composite numbers after that. Then we have prime factorization, and it goes on and on until the end. Now, you also get a homework book. This book goes home. That's why it says homework, okay? This stays in class, this one goes home. So I'm gonna put my name on this one as well. Tay June Lee, class five one, student number, 50. Okay? Now the homework book is set up the same way. Right? You open to page one, and there are the topics, the textbook page that you can refer to if you need to, and then the practice and homework page. Now what I like about the practice book and the homework books or that they are always going to be on the same pages. It's nice and convenient. So in the practice book, 
order of operations is on page 34, and it is also on page 34 in the homework book, okay? The reason I want you to keep this book at home, okay, is because you don't have to keep taking it home and bringing it back each week, okay? It stays at home. And then I will tell you when I want you to bring your homework book in. When there is a test, the week before the test, I will tell you to review the pages in your practice book, review the pages in your homework book. The day of the test, that's when you bring the homework book to school. Then I will check Okay, to make sure that you've done your work. And then I can give you credit for doing your homework. Okay, now, you have to take very good care of these. Now to talk on a serious note, okay? There is not enough for each student to have an actual copy of the practice book and the homework book, okay? So I had to make copies of these. I had to make 120 copies. That's one for each student in grade five, okay? Do not lose these books. Do not leave them on the train. Do not leave them at academy, cram school, whatever you wanna call it. Do not leave these in the library. Do not take these into the bathroom and drop them in the toilet or in the sink. It took me a lot of time to make these copies. It took me a lot of time to staple them together. Okay? Boys and girls, you are 10 years old. Some of you are 11 years old now. You need to be responsible. You need to take very good care of your things. Okay? If you would not lose your Korean textbook or workbook, and if you would not lose your Japanese textbook and workbook, please do not lose your English books, whether it is English math, English science, English language arts. Don't lose these. Your teachers spent a lot of time putting these together for you, okay? You get one practice workbook. One, one. You get one homework book. One, okay? You will have two books total. One practice workbook and one homework book. If you come to me and you say, Mr. Waterman, I lost my practice book. Here's what I'm going to say. Take out your notebook. You're going to write everything out in your notebook. You only get one, okay? Because if you lose it and I give you another one, that's not teaching you how to be responsible, okay? You have a clear file folder. Keep it in the clear file folder in your desk at school. Should the practice book go home? You only take the practice book home when I tell you to take it home. Okay? Do not lose this homework book. If you say, Mr. Waterman, I lost it. I don't know where it is. You can spend lunchtime with me. Okay? And then in your notebook, you can copy the problems that you need to do for homework on a piece of paper. You only get one copy. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. It's very important that you take very special care of these notebooks. Understood? Okay, now the other thing I'm going to show you today is how we're going to use the textbook. Okay, just examples. This is going to be a very simple, easy math class today. All right, so. When we start using our textbooks, I will always tell you to open up to the page we're going to study. So 
This is what we're going to do in the next math class. We're going to start with order of operations. The first thing we will do, we always read the objective, okay? So the objective is to use the order of operations to simplify expressions, okay? So you may have done this in grade four last year, okay? We look at the example where it says learn about it. We will read it. Usually there are rules on the right side of the page. We read each rule. And we also look at the vocabulary words. These are important. Because on a test, sometimes I might ask you a true false question on a test. And that true false question may come from something that we read in the learn about it part and something that we read if we were looking at the rules. So you need to pay very close attention. Your test questions are not always going to be numbers, okay? I gave a math quiz in grade four last year that was like that. You had true, false, you had multiple choice, and you had fill in the blank. Keeps you on your toes. It is English math class after all, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do today. We're just gonna keep it nice and simple. Today, I have shown you a few things. The textbook that we are going to be using. I have shown you the homework book we are using this year. I have shown you the practice book we are using this year. And I have also shown you the notebooks that we are going to use this year. The textbook never ever goes home. This will stay in the math room which is downstairs in the basement. That's Miss Harris's classroom. The homework book goes home, it stays home until I tell you to bring it into school. Since English math is only once a week and we don't have a lot of time, okay, there will be times where I say, I will check your homework every other week because we don't have a lot of time once a week to go over the homework to do a new lesson, and to do practice exercises in the practice book. That is why this practice workbook stays in school. Your notebooks will also stay in school. You will have trays to put your notebooks in the math classroom, and you will get them at the start of every single class. Okay? Now, if you have any questions, feel free to email Mr. Waterman at any time. Many of you have my Weebly address, okay? Many of you know that my videos go directly to YouTube. It's just nice and simple. We should only be doing this for another couple of weeks, hopefully. And then when you come into school, everyone will come in. Now, let's have a good year in math class. I love teaching mathematics. It's one of my favorite classes to teach, and I love teaching it to grades four and now grade five. We only have a little bit of time together, but I enjoy teaching that math class to 5-1 and to 5-2 and to 5-3 once a week. It's not a lot of time, but we can do a lot. We can learn a lot. Sometimes we play games. Sometimes we play games for prizes in math class, okay? All I want you to do is to, one, do not lose any of the workbooks I give you. Number two, I want you to try your best. If something's difficult, ask a question. Don't be afraid. Mr. Waterman is here to help you. Your classmates are here to help you. We are a family and math class. There's going to be 40 of us together in the classroom downstairs, so I know that's a lot. So it's going to be very important for everyone to listen very carefully. It's going to be very important for everyone to respect each other. It's going to be important for everyone to respect Mr. Waterman's rules, okay? And do that, and we will be sure to have a good time together this year. All right, that's all for today's math class. I want you to remember what I said. And 
From next week is when we will start our lesson on order of operations. Take care, stay safe, and be well. And I look forward to hearing from you all and seeing you very soon. Bye-bye for now.